This was one of my very first cruises back in 1983, and I would be on the Royal Caribbean's one-year-old ship, The Song of America. In retrospect, there could not have been a better choice of cruise lines to see the Caribbean on my first cruise. They always say you never forget the first girl you fell in love with, and the same is true for this ship. One thing that has never changed is the check-in for your cruise. It always seems so chaotic, and I can say it did back then, and it still does today. You spend your time getting the forms filled out, getting up to the head of the line, but then finally, it's time to board. I'm going to get a little film of you here. Our cabin steward. Hi, what's your name? Ron. Ron? Ron? Okay. Hey, nice steward. to meet you, man. I did me. Great trip, and I'll ride you soon. This yeah. is deck 2B. This is where we are. And if you look over here, this is our cabin. We are right here. <laughs> there is a retired sergeant. <laughs> This is just like a damn tourist, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know it. We'll love this when we get home. <laughs> yeah. Did you that tripod around? Do what? The names. This is the uh, lobby area of the ship here. The entrance right there. That's where Julia met us. <laughs> this board was our state-of-the-art cruising position information. The lights started out red and turned green as we progressed to show our location and the ports ahead. The problem was, after a while, it got depressing seeing your cruise come to an end when you were almost out of red lights. There was no GPS back then, so this was it. Our departure port was Miami, and I recall our ship being the largest in port. As I toured around the ship, I checked out the lifeboats and take note of how open they are. I would not want to be in a storm in one of these things. Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines had operated throughout the 1970s with three ships that had been built in Helsinki, Finland. Two of these had been lengthened towards the end of the decades, but due to the increased demand, RCCL decided to order a new larger ship from the Helsinki shipyard. The Song of America entered service with Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines on December the 5th, 1982, and cruised the itinerary from Miami to Nassau to San Juan and St. Thomas. The Viking Crown Lounge became the signature of Royal Caribbean ships and was a 180 degree wraparound structure facing the aft of the ship. However, the Song of America was different. It was redesigned to be a 360 degree wraparound structure. And boy, what a view from up there. Besides being a place that had a great view at night, it turned into the disco and that is when the dancing and fun all began on this ship. Skyward pulling on out of the uh, dock here right next to us. The main showroom of the Song of America was known as the Can Can Lounge. It was beautifully decorated. In 1983, it looked absolutely massive to me. However, when compared to today's ships, it now looks very small. Still, I saw some wonderful shows in there and have great memories of it. The card room area was actually a lounge on deck five, which was situated on the long runway between the Can Can Lounge and the Oklahoma Lounge, pretty much center of the ship. It was a great place to meet people or just sit back and people watch while sitting next to the window and having a drink. The Oklahoma Lounge was located at the back of the ship. It was actually a fairly large room 
and basically secondary or smaller type shows were performed in here along with some of the great bands that were on board the ship and this allowed for dancing in this particular area for the people that did not want to go up to the viking crown and do the disco dance at the time This part of the video takes you back when you had to use an actual key to open the door. The other interesting thing was, if you take note, next to the beer, they have an ashtray and matches for me, just in case I wanted to have a smoke in the room. Don't see that anymore today. The Song of America had a weight of 37,000 tons and held 1,575 passengers. This was massive back in the day. The ships of today now weigh 225,000 tons and can carry 5,400 passengers. Our first port was Nassau, Bahamas, and this was my first time visiting the Caribbean islands. After visiting the town, I found a beautiful beach with crystal clear waters. Nassau turned out to be a wonderful visit and set the tone for the rest of the trip. During the hot Caribbean nights, it was great to go up and stroll around the pool area before retiring to bed. Since the ship was so small compared to today's standards, it took little effort getting there. During the day, the main pool area would be packed and the band would be playing and the crew staff would be having everybody participate in the pool games. The indoor-outdoor carpet on the pool deck area was quite nice as you could walk barefoot on it and not burn your feet on the hot days. Another thing I thought was beautiful was the varnished decks. However, in all practicality, they turned out to be slick when they got wet and people were falling down. So that was something the cruise line later changed on other ships. Another fun thing was going to visit the bridge while the ship was underway. As you can see, there was no shortage of people wanting to see how the ship was controlled as the captain or his assistant answered endless questions. I remember looking at the equipment and thinking how high tech it was. Now when you look back at it and compare it to a bridge of today, it's quite different as you can see by this photo. Now getting bridge tours are not easy and sometimes impossible in today's world because of terrorism concerns and it's sad to see something like that that has gone by the wayside. I can tell you, when standing up on that bridge and looking out at the vast ocean and the blue Caribbean waters, what a view that is. I kind of envy those guys that work up there because I don't think I could get tired of that view, especially as it changes constantly as you sail through the ocean. Just beautiful. Our last two ports of call were Puerto Rico, which turned out to have some great beaches and an incredible rainforest, and then the Virgin Islands, where I thought I had died and gone to heaven. These itineraries combined with travel on this new ship made a vacation that I talked about for years to come. The Song of America stayed in the Royal Fleet for 17 years. And when it was sold in 1999, it was renamed the Sunbird. In 2005, it went to the Thomas Destiny and 2012, the Louis Olympia. 
In 2014, it was named the Celestial Olympia, and now at 38 years old, it still roams the Greek islands. As you can see, the video quality way back then was nothing like it is today, but I sure hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave me some comments, especially if you've ever sailed on this ship or other similar ships. I'd love to hear about it. Also, please subscribe as I'm going to be putting out a few more of these old vintage videos so we can go back in recent history together and that will let you be notified when they come out. Thanks so much for watching Pat's Adventures.